from D.C. Great show. Welcome to Hannity Breaking News tonight. President Trump refusing to back down in his efforts to secure America's borders. The president, once again, he is demanding the wall be built, and he's revealing his details tonight about his plan to send the National Guard down to our southern border. Now, the president is also blasting unlawful sanctuary cities and, of course, the state of California and the mayor of Oakland, California, who has shielded criminal illegal immigrants. We'll have the details. And also, also tonight, Fox News confirming the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, he has now received Chairman Devin Nunes' letter from the House Intel Committee demanding that Rosenstein stop stonewalling record requests, be transparent with the American people. Now, we have all of that. Plus, tonight, we are going to name names and expose who is the biggest liar in Congress. Which liberal Democrat is it? Well, we'll tell you later. We'll reveal that. And we have now even more explosive text messages just released a few minutes ago between the FBI lovebirds, Trump haters, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, Catherine Herridge reporting that one text message indicates that Strzok actually traveled to London in early August of 2016 to interview a key witness. We'll have all of that and all the details in tonight's important breaking news opening monologue. All right, the president, once again, he's leading from the front. Oh, how refreshing. And frankly, he's even dragging the weak Republican Party with him as he now tries to keep the promises he made to you on the campaign trail, you the American people. Now, instead of being content with Congress's inability to get things done, President Trump once again pressing ahead, trying to enact his agenda. Now, this now includes renewing his calls for America to get much tougher, much smarter on illegal immigration, securing our country. Now, here's what the president said by blasting these very weak, ineffective immigration laws. Here's what he said. We had very, very weak laws. We have the worst, worst laws. You have the catch and release which we're terminating very quickly. We're doing it in pieces. If one foot hits our country, we have to take those people, gently register them, and then release them, okay? We're going to release them, essentially, in a short period of time. So we release them. And then they're supposed to come back for a court case. We hire more judges. We're trying to hire thousands of judges. No other country in the world does it. We hire judges so that these people will come back. If you have a baby on our land, congratulations. That baby is a United States citizen. We're the only one. But I'll tell you what, the laws of this country have to be strengthened and toughened up because it is crazy. We're going to have our wall, and we're going to get it very strongly. The military is going to be building some of it. But we're going to have very strong borders, and we have to change our laws, and we're working on doing that. Now, the president is so right. Think about this. America's immigration laws are so ridiculously idiotic, foolish, outdated, and they're constantly being abused. Now, there's a reason why just about every other country on the face of the earth, they do things differently. They're a lot tougher on illegal immigrants, and Mexico leads the way. And the president is now taking matters into his own hands. Now, last night he signed that proclamation to send the National Guard to the southern border to assist our Border Patrol with security until, of course, we can build the wall. And tonight the president is saying between 2,000 and 4,000 troops will be sent down to protect the southern border. Great idea. Finally, we're going to get that done. Now, liberals, of course, they're furious, even though there is a long-established precedent for doing this. Yeah, that's right. Barack Obama and George W. Bush, they did the same thing. Doesn't seem to matter to the left in this country because they just oppose every single thing that President Trump does. Now, the liberal Oregon governor, Kate Brown, she's saying she's going to refuse to send National Guard troops from her state to the border if she's asked by President Trump. Montana Governor Steve Bullock, he's saying he'll never deploy the National Guard. Here's a question. Do any of these states have opioid problems? In other words, drugs coming across the Mexican border? Watch this show on Showtime called Trade. It gives you a lot of detail about where those drugs come from. And a battle also appears to be brewing between the Trump administration and the sanctuary state of California over whether California is going to comply with the president's plan. Now, as we have been reporting on this right here on this program, California is now ground zero for the leftist resistance to the president's attempts to combat illegal immigration. As a result, President Trump, once again, he is blasting sanctuary states like California and this corrupt, aiding and abetting criminal behavior mayor of Oakland. Take a look. 
If you look in California and you see what's happening, it's an incredible phenomenon because sanctuary cities, it's the worst. It's basically a city to protect a lot of people that are bad people. How about the mayor of Oakland, where she tells a thousand people to get going? Law enforcement's coming to get you. And this was all planned, and many of them scattered. And it was pretty much a failure. Uh, I mean, to me, that's obstruction of justice. And something should happen there. And it hasn't, and I don't know why it hasn't, but something should happen there. Yeah, that is obstruction of justice. That's called aiding and abetting criminals. By the way, that's not DACA. It's not dreamers. These are illegal immigrants in the country committing more crimes. Now, remember, she gave a warning to these criminal illegal immigrants that they were going to be deported by ICE and gave them a warning. And because of her actions, we know that hundreds of people were able to avoid being apprehended. And, of course, she put the Border Patrol in jeopardy because you don't know what's going to happen after you warn them that they're going to be raided. Now, also tonight, liberal members of the mainstream corrupt media, they're losing their minds over the president's comments today about sexual assault, rape, and violence that are committed by some illegal immigrants against migrant women. Watch this. Remember my opening remarks at Trump Tower when I opened? Everybody said, oh, he was so tough. And I used the word rape. And yesterday it came out where this journey coming up, women are raped at levels that nobody's ever seen before. They don't want to mention that. Here's a question for the left, liberal Democrats, all these people that support illegal immigration in this country. All right, can you explain to the members of this country and our community and our family in America how it is so outrageous for the president to actually speak about the violence that is being committed by some against migrant women. Now, think about this. If one American woman gets raped, isn't that too much? If one American woman, let's say Kate Steinle, gets murdered, isn't that one too many? And nobody seems to be saying that, you know, all these people that cross the border, they are guilty of this. Nobody's saying that. It's not all people. We know that people come across the border. They want a better life for their children, their grandchildren. We're just asking come and come legally. Now, since the media is impervious to truth and facts, let us educate them as we always need to. Or earlier this week, the LA Times, they reported on the caravans that moved through Latin America, and they found that robberies, rapes, assaults perpetrated by smugglers, cartel members, and Mexican immigration uh, agents are common. And in one incident, they pointed to you know, a number of years ago, 72 in 2010 kidnapped migrants were killed by a cartel in northern Mexico. Now, look at this McClatchy report. Same year, as many as six out of every 10 Central American women and girls are raped as they pass through Mexico, hoping to cross illegally into the United States, Amnesty International reported. Now, these numbers are beyond disturbing. And then, of course, there's all the human smuggling, all the sex trafficking. We played the tape numerous times, 642,000 crimes, uh, charges against the illegal immigrants in a seven-year period against Americans in one state. That's crimes against Texans and including the most violent crimes. Now, from all the information we have, it is a very serious problem that is impacting people in our country. Now, what's so inexcusable about all of this is the left refuse to respect America's right to sovereignty and security. It's not their families that are dealing with this, apparently. And by the way, this includes all the facts and all the evidence. Listen to this. Under President Trump, border crossings are down over 70 percent. But since Congress refused to build the wall, we're now beginning to see a an uptick at the border. Take a look at this headline. Illegal immigration up 200 percent just this past month in March after Senate legalization debate. People trying to come into the country illegal. Guess what? There's nothing stupid about what they're doing. I especially people that want a better life and they know America's back door is wide open and they know they can essentially walk in whenever they want. Well, that also means people that are criminal elements, they too can walk in. That means even gang members can walk in. And that means people, even terrorists can walk in. Every American is in jeopardy. And according to the Department of Justice, asylum seekers have an 88% uh, percentage change of a chance of avoiding expedited removal just by claiming they have a, quote, credible fear. 
Now, there's a reason why President Trump's poll numbers are now surging. Why? It's very simple. He's actually keeping his word, his campaign promises, and the American people like it, and they're responding positively, no matter how much they lie about him, attack him on basically everything. This is a model for the rest of the GOP and the Republican Party. You want to win in 2018? Keep your promises. Fight for the American people. Just basic, simple common sense and good business. All right, we also have tonight huge developments in the House Intel Committee. Chairman Devin Nunes is at the time to get to the truth about the corrupt Russia investigation. Now, the FBI is finally responding tonight to Chairman Nunes and his request for Congress to be able to see an unredacted revision of the original document that set off this phony Russia probe. Now, in a statement, the FBI is saying, quote, the FBI received the reference letter from Chairman Nunes, and we are reviewing it to determine the next steps. As a general matter, before FBI records may be released outside the FBI to include congressional committees, they must first undergo our standard review and redaction process to ensure that statutorily restricted information, such as grand jury material, classified material, sensitive law enforcement material, and other privileged material is not improper properly disclosed. Okay, they first requested this in August of 2017. They've had plenty of time to do their job. And by the way, you want to protect classified information? Why did you give Hillary a pass? Why did you exonerate her without investigating her? So it sounds like here the FBI is going to again refuse to comply with the request to turn over unredacted documents. Now, Chairman Nunes, he's given the Bureau, the DOJ, until next Wednesday to cooperate, and he's going to issue subpoenas. I have a better idea. How about we hold Rod Rosenstein in contempt of Congress, because he's the one stonewalling. Never seen such a level of stonewalling. And it's being led by Rosenstein, and it's reaching unprecedented levels. It seems that Rosenstein is terrified that the American people are actually going to find out the truth about all these nefarious activities that top-ranking FBI DOJ officials were doing against the Trump campaign. In other words, his friends. And remember, Rosenstein, well, he's the guy groveling to Paul Ryan in January and begging the Speaker to prevent Nunes from actually seeing the documents that later became the Nunes memo. Now, if Rosenstein clearly has his way. We wouldn't know anything about rampant FISA abuses. And by the way, he has a major conflict of interest in all of this. He should have recused himself, and he should be removed now. And that's why Congressman Nunes is doing, you know, these things which are so important. And if the FBI and Rod Rosenstein, if they want to continue to obstruct Congress from conducting oversight, then Nunes needs to issue more subpoenas and hold these people in contempt. Now, the deep state is scared to death because they know the truth is now being uncovered and what they did is now being exposed, and also we know it to be illegal. Now, also tonight, a House Judiciary Committee aide is telling Fox News, again, the DOJ has failed to meet, in this case, Chairman Bob Goodlatte's deadline to turn over 1.2 million documents. This is now obstruction on their part. Congress has a constitutional role. It's called oversight. It's called checks and balances. It's called co-equal branches of government, remember? And this is why it is critical that Congress keeps pressing for answers. Now, one of the biggest liberals trying to block this from happening, oh, our friend Democratic Congressman, wannabe MSNBC conspiracy host, Adam Schiff. Now, he is by far the biggest liar in the United States Congress, and we have the evidence. Here's why. For over a year, Shifty, Adam Schiff, has been purposefully and maliciously misleading the entire country about what is really going on with the Russia investigation. You don't believe it? Take a look at his ever-changing talking points. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. He doesn't even remember his own lies. Take a look. What do you got hard? Well, Chris, yeah, Chris, unfortunately, I can't go into the evidence that's uh, being presented to the Do you have something hard and, that you can't reveal? Uh, you know, I can't uh, reveal that, Chris. Of course, there's one thing to say there's evidence. There's another thing to say we can prove this or prove it beyond a reasonable doubt or there's enough evidence to bring to a grand jury for purposes of a criminal indictment. I don't think we can say anything definitively at this point. Uh, we are still at the very early stage of the investigation. We haven't seen an actual proof of cooperation and collusion. So what am I missing here? Well, you know, I think you have to look at the pattern and the chronology. The Russians offered help, the campaign accepted help. The Russians gave help, and the president made full use of that help. 
and that is pretty damning. Last March, you said you had more than circumstantial evidence of treasonous collusion with Russia. What specifically were you referring to? And please be specific, because if it's true, I do believe Americans have the right to know a year later what that is. Well, I've certainly certainly said that there's ample evidence of collusion. I've never used the word treason. Uh, only Steve Bannon has used that word. Um, but uh, if you look at the, the facts that are already in the public domain, they're pretty damning. The American people need to know whether the Russians still have something they can hold over the president's head, the president of the United States. Uh, so our work is far from done. I can okay. certainly say with confidence that there is significant evidence of collusion uh, between the campaign and Russia. Collusion is not a crime. You're supposed to be a congressman. You're nothing but a national embarrassment. You've had 14 months. This guy is just pathetic. He can't even keep his own story straight. And he looks stupid on The View, which, by the way, is a spectacular achievement. And at this point, Congressman Schiff has zero credibility, which makes him the perfect candidate to be a contributor on Conspiracy TV, MSNBC. Well, let's be honest. That's probably his ultimate goal. Now, also tonight, Catherine Herridge, she has uncovered newly released text messages between the FBI lovebirds, professional Trump haters, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, and they indicate that Strzok went to London in August of 2016 to interview a key witness just days after the FBI opened their Russia investigation. Interesting. He's the guy at the heart of all of this. Now, according to these texts, while well, the Trump-hating FBI official, well, appears to be he and his lover debating what they're going to reveal to their bosses at the FBI when Strzok gets back to Washington, D.C. What do we tell them? How about the truth? And then a week later, while well, the texts also seem to reference a series of high-profile briefings beginning at the Obama White House and on Capitol Hill. Question is, who was Strzok interviewing in Great Britain? Could it have been Mike, uh, Christopher Steele? We're going to continue to stay on that story. Finally tonight. All right. Hillary Clinton needs to go away. You know what? She can't accept she's lost. She's regularly just adding to this very, very long list of people, places, and things for her stunning election defeat. She was a horrible candidate. No me message. It's pathetic at this point. I almost, not quite, almost feel sorry for her. Now take a look at this list that Hillary can't stop. She's got a problem. Imagine if she was president. Actually scary. And now instead of constantly whining and complaining about losing, Hillary is actually now trying to take credit. Hillary Clinton for starting the Me Too movement. I didn't make this up. Take a look. I believe that it was a wave that was building and building and building. I think my losing probably accelerated that wave, but the wave was coming. She's just delusional, or maybe she thinks we're too dumb and will actually believe her. Here's a little newsflash for Hillary. Uh, she was best friends with serial abuser Harvey Weinstein, who's been accused of sexual misconduct by all of those women. And according to the Center for Responsive Politics, Weinstein donated $44,000 to the Clintons campaign, gave an additional 15 grand to her super PAC or super PACs with ties to the Clintons. So, Hillary, no, you didn't have anything to do with the Me Too movement. Instead, you kind of propped up people like Weinstein. And then there's this little uncomfortable truth that, yeah, you viciously smeared Hillary, slandered Hillary, and tried to discredit your husband's accusers. Remember, you threatened Jennifer Flowers, saying that you would crucify her in a courtroom? And then you claimed that Monica Lewinsky was a narcissistic looney tune, and then refused to deny that you said it years later in an interview with Diane Sawyer? And then, of course, you intimidated Juanita Broderick after she accused your husband of raping her in a hotel in Arkansas. And we can't forget how her family foundation took tens of millions of dollars from all these countries that abuse women. So, Hillary, we know you're bitter about what happened. Here's some free advice. Do yourself a favor. Go fishing. Stop talking. And with reaction, NRA TV contributor, former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, author of the best-selling book, now bookstores this week, Geraldo.